Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Casio FX CG50 to check your answers to the Corbett Maths booklet on simultaneous equations. These are simultaneous linear equations. So it's just there's a I'll do a different video for what to do if you have some non-linear equations in there. So firstly, if I turn my calculator on, this time for the first time I'm going to take you down to here option A, which is the equation one. So I tend to use a scroll pad as soon as it gets to letters. Execute to open it up. Now there are three separate sub-menus I can go to into here. I can solve simultaneous equations, I can solve polynomials, and there's equation solver there at the bottom. I rarely use that. I did use that when um, I was doing some work um, with teaching A-level classes and some um, SUVAT equations and this, that, the other, but on the whole, I, I haven't uh, I, well, I haven't used it at all for GCSE. Polynomial is useful. Now I know in other videos I've shown you the solve n. And for a polynomial, you can do it for a degree up to six, which is very handy for further mathematicians when we're thinking about um, solving equations because it deals with complex numbers as well. But generally, you might have a quadratic, and it's just that your quadratic needs to be in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, just like using the quadratic formula. So that's where you would go through with that one, and um, I'll put a video together another time to show you how to do that in more detail. So if I push exit, that takes me back. Exit takes me back again, and the one we're going to focus on today is simultaneous. So if I push F1, that's simultaneous. There's no data in the memory at the moment, that's fine. Number of unknowns. You can deal with anything up to six unknowns, which once again, very handy the further you go with mathematics. Generally in GCSE, we only deal with two. So let's have a look. Let's open my booklet. So on the very first question, it says, do not use trial and improvement. And once again, what this calculator will do is it will give me the final answer so I can check my answers are correct. It does not secure any method marks in showing processes. So I have X and Y, I have two unknowns. And then what we need to have is you need to make sure that everything is lined up in columns. So first variable, second variable equals a number. And then we can enter that onto the calculator here. It says A relates to X, B to Y, and C to M. And if I have three variables, I just have a third row, etc., etc. So first value is five. I don't lose my cursor to move around this time. Execute moves me over. That's three. Execute 41. Execute moves me down. Two. Execute three. Execute 20 equals. And then if I push solve, it gives me the solutions. It tells me that X is seven and Y is two. So X is seven and Y is two, and I can use that to check my answers. Underneath here, it has a negative. So how would we deal with that? If I press repeat, it'll take me back to this screen and I can just overwrite it. In my columns again, X, Y equals a number. So I've got five, one, 11, three, minus one, nine. Solve that I have 2.5, it gives me a decimal here. It will give me a fraction or even a third here in this part of the screen, depending on how you want your answer written. And then y is minus 1.5. So x is 2.5 and y is negative 1.5. So let's just have a little look at some more questions. X, Y number, X, Y number. So I can't see anything different here at the moment. Here is where you're deriving your own equations to solve. And it's just making sure that if you have two DVDs and two CDs that cost 18 pound, that everything still lines up in those columns. Because if it does, then you've got two, two, 18, three, two, 22, solve, that's four and five. So a DVD costs four pound and a CD costs five pound. It's just really, really helpful trying to check now to see if there are any questions that have a different format to what we've looked at already. X is Y's. Here, the letters are the other way round. So you can either rearrange or you can just know on here what you're doing. Um, so if I did two minus five, nine, 
four, three, five, and I did solve, I would just need to know that where I've been entering my x value was actually corresponding to y. So it would be that y is here, y is 2, and x is negative 1. So it can be tricky when it's the same letters in a different order. If you've got um, more confident mathematicians, you might get them to rearrange. But um, they may not need to do that. Moving onwards, here they're in different columns, x's and y's, so I would have to rearrange this. So I would, to keep x's and y's in the same place, I would rearrange that one, negative 3x plus y equals 3, and then that is what I would enter into my calculator, negative 3, add 1 equals 3, and then I've got 1, Subtract 2 equals 4, solve, so I get negative 2 and negative 3. So x and y ordinates. Here's a and c. It doesn't matter the letters that we use. All I would enter in is use these in my x column, these in my y column. So 3, 1, 8, 2, negative 1, 7, solve, and it gives me the answers 3 for a and negative one for C. I just need to remember which order I've done the questions in. Here it is different. So here I've got variables and numbers in the wrong places as such to use this format on the calculator. So I will need to do some rearranging. I will rearrange this to give me negative X plus two Y equals 10. And this one to give me negative two X plus y is negative seven. Once I've done that, I enter the coefficients into the calculator and solve. And it gives me the answers eight and nine. Let's just check a few more. That one, once again, would need rearranging. Underneath, you're having to set up and solve simultaneous equations. We've done a question like that before and the same on the last two. So that's the end of my video for today on using the equation facility on the Casio FX CG50 to help you solve simultaneous, limited, simultaneous linear equations from the Corbett Maths booklet. Thank you very much.